Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to today's lesson, which will be the first lesson we do on the nation of Ghana. And there are many nations in West Africa, and we have learned a little bit about Nigeria. Um, and today we are going to focus on Ghana, which is not only a country today, but was an empire in ancient history. So. Um, our essential question is going to be, what was unique and interesting about Ghana? So please write that across the top of your Cornell notes right now. We're transitioning. So the first thing we are going to answer is, what was Ghana's government like? We always look at the government of different countries that we study. This is no different. What was Ghana's government like? Please write that on the left side. First of all, we need to know that Arab scholars called Ghana the land of gold. And there's good reason for that, because Ghana had a lot of gold. Ghana was a monarchy led by a king, like many uh, nation states and uh, empires in the ancient world. Um, the monarchy system was uh, used in Ghana like it was in many other parts of the world. There is a picture of the Ghanaian king. If you are from Ghana, you are Ghanaian. That is the proper way to say it. The king became wealthy by controlling the gold trade. Because gold was so important in Ghana, the king essentially had control of the trading, buying, and selling of gold, and that's what made him powerful. All the gold in the kingdom was to be given to the king. All the gold in the kingdom was considered to belong to the king. And as you can see in the picture there, he's adorned with gold. So, so that was a big deal. Regular citizens were only allowed to have gold dust. And the difference between having a gold nugget and gold dust is the difference between having $100 and having a million dollars. It was a big difference. One piece of gold was as large as 40 pounds. In today's world, that would be a mind-blowing amount of gold. 40 pounds would be an enormous amount of gold. Uh, and back then it still was, but in today's world that's almost unheard of. Um, a large group of officers helped the king run the government, and he appointed the local govern uh, governor. So um, the king maintained control by having what we call a bureaucracy. Um, that goes back to the China unit. And by appointing governors who were loyal to him to do his bidding uh, in the towns and villages that he controlled. So in Ghana, the succession, and please notice the vocabulary word, line was matrilineal. In other words, if you were the son of the king's sister, you took over the throne, which is different than being patrilineal, where it would be just based on being the son of the king. So if you were the son of the king's sister, you got to take over the throne, which is a fairly unique system uh, in world history. And so there is a picture representing the patrilineal nature of Ghana. And now we're going to switch slides. So what was Ghana's military like? It takes a military to control an empire. How did that work? First thing you need to know is that Ghana's army included a regular army, reserve forces, and elite soldiers. So regular army is basically people who are in the army all the time. Reserve forces are people who get called up in an emergency. And elite soldiers are people who do the dirty work of being in the army, the people who are on the front lines and do what has to be done to accomplish goals. Uh, they wore knee-high cotton pants, sleeveless tunics, sandals, and headdresses. So that picture you see down here, that's a picture of how they dressed. Keep in mind the climate in this area is extremely hot and humid. So while that may not look like an army uniform to you, uh, it did keep them comfortable. 
Their weapons were spears, daggers, swords, battle clubs, and bows and arrows. There were no guns. There were no guns. They used more what we would consider to be old-fashioned weapons. Every man in the empire was required to complete some form of military training. So if you were a man, you did not get to escape from having to be in the military. You had to serve the king. You had to serve the empire. You had to protect the king and the empire. And you did not have a choice in that matter. At some points, the army could be as large as 200,000 soldiers, which is a pretty sizable force for a small geographic area. And the elite soldiers were selected for the qualities of courage, honesty, and intelligence. So in order to become an elite soldier, you had to stand out. And they served as bodyguards as well as military advisors to the king. Oops, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're going to keep the first lesson fairly short today. So this is the end of lesson one about Ghana. Um, you know what's coming next. I don't need to say it. You have essentially a page full of notes. At the bottom of that page full of notes, you should in, I'd say, three to four sentences, because this is a short lesson, summarize the most important thing. I'd probably take two important things from the first slide and two important things from the second slide, and you would have yourself a fairly amazing summary. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. B checking out till next time in seventh grade social studies.